When the, uh, one of the deans from the Student Affairs called me and told me that I was a recipient of the Nikon Scholarship, I uh, had him repeat it because I didn't really understand what he was saying. I thought uh, that it was just another phase in the process and that I didn't actually get the scholarship yet. And then when it hit me that I was one of the recipients, I was really honored and floored and I had to sit down and uh, have him repeat it again and uh, I got very excited. and. Uh, it, I think it's a, a testament to the AAMC that they are putting diversity in the forefront um, of their priorities and they're identifying students around the country who are working to uh, eliminate health care disparities in America and the fact that they are giving students scholarships to support those efforts uh, makes me very proud to be a medical student um, and a future physician. I think my role in advancing health equity across America um, is primarily through education. And I started a program uh, called MERIT, stands for the Medical Education Resources Initiative for Teens. And we identify students in Baltimore City who are interested in becoming healthcare professionals. We identify them as sophomores and follow them through graduation and into college and provide three levels of support. Um, we provide Saturday sessions every week to teach uh, healthcare disparities, professionalism, academic remediation, and college admissions guidance. We provide summer internships so they get to see what it's like to work in a clinical setting in a hospital. And we also give them mentoring uh, through undergraduate students and graduate students. And Merritt's idea is that we are creating future leaders of medicine and inspiring these students from low-income backgrounds and who are first generation college students to become the leaders to really eliminate healthcare disparities. I think a transformative experience for me was the two years I spent teaching high school biology in Baltimore City through the Teach for America program. And as a teacher, I saw educational inequalities lead to health inequalities. And I had two students in particular that inspired the creation of merit. So one student was named Tyron, and he came in my 11th grade biology class without a good science background. He didn't know what cells were. He didn't know what DNA was. He didn't know what the heart did. And because of that, he really hated science. And he told me the first day of class that we'd get along if I let him sleep in class and didn't bother him. Uh, but a couple months later, Tyron wrote one of the best essays in the class comparing mitochondria and chloroplasts and their roles in photosynthesis and respiration. And he started getting really excited about science. And he told me that he wanted to become a physician. Uh, so on one hand, that was really exciting to see a rapid transformation in just a few months. But Tyron's math and English skills were far below grade level. And I knew it wasn't going to be realistic for him to get to medical school unless there was something additional for him. Next to Tyron in the same class was a student named Michael who came in limping one day. Um, I asked him what was wrong and he said, oh, don't worry about it. Uh, and I asked him if he'd seen a doctor and he told me that he didn't go see doctors. And I asked him what he meant and he said the closest clinic he knew was two bus rides away and his mother didn't have insurance so he just didn't want to bother with it. So in the same class I had one student who wants to become a doctor and one student who doesn't see doctors. And the idea clicked that if we can help students like Tyron get to medical school, they're going to create the clinics right around Michael's corner, and they're going to provide access to health care that they don't have. Um, so by creating this workforce uh, of future physician leaders, we can really eliminate health care disparities. The biggest piece of advice I can give any person interested in pursuing a medical career is to follow your passion. Don't worry about what looks good or what you think will help you. If you find a passion and something you're interested in, pursue that and that will come out in all of your applications and you will succeed. Don't be afraid to take risks. Get advice from people who have gone through the path above you. But above all, just find something that sticks with you uh, and make sure you focus all of your efforts on building your passion and your skills. To advance health equity and diversity, I think academic leaders across the country need to focus on two things. Um, first, a lot of effort has been put into increasing diversity in the physician workforce, mainly through the medical student level and the undergraduate student level. But to really increase diversity, we need to focus on K-12 education. So I'd really recommend that academic medicine leaders 
work with our colleagues in K-12 education to come up with creative, innovative solutions to increase uh, the diversity and create that pipeline, because that's where the real work needs to happen, K-12.